we've looked at the C major scale and we have examined the structure of the scale and we know that the C major scale or for that matter any major scale but we're going to stick with the key of C for the moment the C major scale is made up of two tetrachords or two four note sequences each consisting of two whole steps and one half step so if you play a C major scale and you start on C and then you go to D and then you go to E and then you go to F it's C to D is a whole step, D to E is a whole step, E to F is a half step. Whole step, whole step, half step. Then we jump a whole step to G, G, A, B, C. So the next four notes, G, A, B, C, also consists of a whole step, a whole step, and a half step in that order. So we have twin tetrachords. Moving beyond the C major scale, we're going to talk about modes. Now, modes are simply a s scales that begin and end on a specific note within the key. If you are playing a scale beginning and ending on C, you're playing a major scale in the key of C. It is also known as Ionian mode. So the C major scale in the key of C is a mode, the Ionian mode. The second mode of the key begins and ends on D. That's Dorian mode. The third mode begins and ends on E, Phrygian mode. The next mode, the fourth mode, begins and ends on F. It is Lydian mode. The fifth mode is Mixolydian mode, beginning and ending on G. The sixth mode is Aeolian mode, beginning and ending on A. The seventh mode is Locrian mode, beginning and ending on B. Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and Locrian. Now, we're not going to get into a discussion of what these names mean uh, historically, they are, in fact, I believe, Greek city-states dating back pretty far. And that doesn't matter, just as the origins of the names of the days of the week doesn't really matter. You remember the names of the days of the week just fine. You can learn these just as easily. There are seven modes with seven names. And um, it's a good idea to, to learn them. Uh, we associate the mode names with the modes partly because we can say the first mode, the second mode, the third mode, the fourth mode, but there's plenty of numbers in music. And it's nice sometimes to get away from using numbers to describe things. And so the mode names come in handy occasionally. Now we're going to talk about modes because modes are very significant in the structure of a lot of the music that you play. So for instance, Mixolydian mode uh, which say we stick with the key of C and we're only using natural tones, no sharps or flats. So if you play the Mixolydian mode, you're playing a scale that begins and ends on G and has the notes G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now, I've played that mode just now on a single string and I'm doing that to bring out the tetrachord structure of the mode. If you start on G, G, A, B, C, well, it starts out just like a major scale. So the first tetrachord of the Mixolydian mode is the same as the first tetrachord of the major scale, two whole steps followed by a half step. And then you jump a whole step, and then something changes. We play D, E, F, G, and now the half step is in the middle of that tetrachord. Now, the Mixolydian mode can and is often described as a major scale with a flat 7, uh, or a flatted 7, and some people say flattened, um, but the 7 is a half step lower than it would be in a major scale. Now, that's fine, nothing wrong with that, except we are looking at tetrachords. So we want to understand the structure of the scale based on tetrachords, so we can think of it as the Ionian tetrachord, or the tetrachord that is the same tetrachord found in the Ionian mode, two whole steps and a half step, followed by essentially the Dorian tetrachord, or the tetrachord that is found in the Dorian mode, which has a half step in the middle. So if you think of the two tetrachord structure, we have half step at the end, half step in the middle. So this structure of this scale, the Mixolydian mode, um, is not twin tetrachords the way the Ionian mode, the Dorian mode, and the Phrygian mode are. So I'll review those three modes now real quick. 
Ionian mode C D E F G A B C. Two tetrachords with a half step at the end of each. Whole step, whole step, half step. Whole step, whole step, half step with a whole step in the middle between the two tetrachords. Dorian mode. Whole step, half step, whole step twice with a whole step in the middle between the two tetrachords. Phrygian mode. Half step, whole step, whole step twice. With a whole step in between the two tetrachords. The first three modes, Ionian, Dorian, and Phrygian, are made up of twin tetrachords. The Mixolydian mode is not. The Mixolydian mode is a mixture of two different tetrachords, as is the Aeolian mode. Aeolian mode begins A, B, C, D. It begins the way the Mixolydian mode ends, with a tetrachord with a half step in the middle, A, B, C, D, and then E, F, G, A ends with a tetrachord that has a half step at the beginning. So in fact, the Aeolian mode and the Mixolydian mode are mirror images of each other. They, some people refer to them as palindromic. Um, G, A, B, C, half step at the end. D, E, F, G, half step in the middle. That's Mixolydian mode. Aeolian mode, A, B, C, D, half step in the middle. E, F, G, A, half step at the beginning of that mode, or of that uh, tetrachord, rather. Aeolian mode and Mixolydian mode, mirror images of each other. Now there are two more modes that are also mirroring each other, the Lydian mode and the Locrian mode, mirror image of each other. The Lydian mode begins with the tritone. And again, let's stick with the key of C. That means we're going to start on F, C, D, E, F. So we have F, G, A, B. That's a tritone. That's, technically speaking, not thought of as a tetrachord. Tetrachords are supposed to have two whole steps and a half step. This is three whole steps. It is four notes, but it is nothing but whole steps in, inside, in between the notes. So the Lydian mode begins with the tritone. Tritone means three tones, and the word tone can also mean whole step. So uh, look it up. Whole tone, or just tone, means whole step. And we are going to keep calling them whole steps, but the term tritone simply means three whole steps. Now it's interesting because the tritone is the only interval structure that I know of which is named for the spaces between the notes. Usually intervals are named for the number of notes that they encompass. And in this case, the tritone is named for the number of whole tones inside of it, the intervals inside the tritone. So the Lydian mode begins with that tritone and then is followed by a half step. Now the half step is going to be in between the two four note sequences, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. It ends with the two whole step, half step, the, basically the first tetrachord of the major scale. Tritone, major scale tetrachord. That's Lydian mode. Now, Locrian mode begins and ends on B. I'm going to find B this time on the third string for convenience, starting on the fourth fret of the third string. B, C, D, E. That's a half step followed by two whole steps. And then we go up another half step, and we end up with another tritone. So Lydian mode begins tritone, followed by whole step, whole step, half step. Locrian mode begins half step, whole step, whole step, followed by a tritone. Again, mirror image modes.
without them, we don't have the blues. We don't have jazz. What do I mean by that? Well, the tritone is an essential element in both of those kinds of music, the, the huge range of possibilities within music we call blues and jazz. And all of it is built around, at least on a fundamental level, built around the tritone, making the tritone central. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's say you play a basic blues. So we'll say blues in A. So I play an A dominant seventh chord. Well, there's a tritone right in the center of that chord. An A dominant seventh chord has the notes A, C sharp, E, and G. A, C sharp, E, and G. Well, between G and C sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, there's your tritone. The dominant seventh chord is essentially the tritone chord. And when you play a blues tune, all of the chords are dominant chords. There's a tritone in the center of this chord. This is a D, I just played a D ninth, I can play a D seventh. There's your tritone. The tritone in that chord, F sharp and C. F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B sharp, well B sharp is C. We can respell it. Or we could go C D E F sharp. Well that makes more sense actually. C D E F sharp. Does it matter? Well actually it's going to matter. Now what I just did was I treated the two notes that make up the tritone the same way as if they were both the root of a tritone. But in fact the tritone can be inverted and when it is inverted something else changes you don't just reverse the notes and leave it at that and this is something that's very important this is essentially what i want to really focus on in this segment but for the moment i'm going to hold off on that because i want to just kind of reinforce this idea of how important the tritone is so a blues tune let's say we have a7 then we have d7 and E7. The tritones in those three chords, this is the tritone from the A7, this is the tritone from the D7, and that's the tritone from the E7. We have These are the chromatic tritones in a 1-4-5 blues pattern. We have a tritone for the A chord, we have a tritone for the D chord, back to A, and then we have a tritone for the E chord, and a tritone for the D chord, and a tritone for the A chord. So even without the rest of the chord, the tritones kind of tell the story. If you just play those, the bass player can do the rest. Now, you may think that those tritones are the same, regardless of which direction you point them. In other words, here, well, this is an A seventh chord, and the tritone in the A seventh chord consists of the notes G and C sharp. The tritone in the D seventh chord consists of the notes F sharp and C. If we go from F sharp to C, well, you know what? Let's simplify this a little bit. I'm going to bring this back to the key of C. Now, if we're in the key of C, the dominant chord is a G7. And the G7 chord consists of the notes G, B, D, F. Now, where is the tritone in that chord? The notes F and B. F and B form a tritone. So if we go from F, G, A, B, tritone. Now, I'm going to... I'm going to play that tritone in a few different places. So in other words, this is an F, that's a B, that's a B, that's an F. You'll 
you'll notice that if we go from F to B to F to B, the shape does not change. The interval between F and B looks the same as the interval between B and F. Why shouldn't it? And the interval between B and F looks like the interval between F and B. It's a diagonal line. You go one fret, one string, one fret, one string. And of course, that will change when you get between the G string and the B string because of the way the strings are tuned. So the tritone ends up stretching out between those two strings. And, or, you know, I'll do it that way if you can see it better. And then we are back on G, uh, uh, rather F and uh, B. So we've got F, B, F, B, F, B. And you might think because they're the same shape that they are the same. But there's something else that goes on there that actually differentiates those two versions of the tritone. You can't just flip the notes and keep everything the same. Once you play the notes that fall between those two notes, and I'll show you what I mean. If we start on F, F, G, A, B, three whole steps. If we start on B, B, C, D, E, F, two whole steps and two half steps. Well, doesn't two whole steps and two half steps add up to three whole steps? Yeah, it does mathematically. But in spite of what you've heard about music being mathematical, well, adding up half steps, making them equal, that's mathematical, but it's not musical. So th three whole steps does not equal two whole steps and two half steps. Yes, mathematically it does. Musically, it does not. If I play this, this idea, I'm not going to get that by playing that. They add up to the same number of half steps, but they are not the same musically, and that's very important. This pattern, that pattern is the basis of, I don't know, a lot of music in the blues genres, in the jazz genres, in a whole bunch of genres. That pattern, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, well, we can build on that pattern. How how would we build on that pattern? We'd have to know what intervals to play based on those five notes. That five note sequence is a flatted fifth if you go from end to end. That is not the same as an augmented fourth, even though they are mathematically equal. It's not the same musically. And that's what we really care about because we're making music. Now I'm going to show you why those inversions of the tritone, even though they're equal mathematically, are not the same musically. Again, if we play B, C, where am I? If we play B, C, D, E, F, E, D, C, B, that is clearly not the same idea musically as going F, G, A, B. And that difference is enough to make this idea absolutely central to the harmonic and melodic structure of an enormous amount of music. Um, without it, you don't have some of the most basic fundamental musical ideas in blues and jazz. The tritone isn't just a thing you play when you're playing chords. It is the center of the entire harmonic structure of this music. Um, let's take, for instance, this pattern again and, and build on each of those notes. 
So the first note is a B, and if B is the seventh note of the diatonic key of C, we know that B, C, D, B to D is a minor third. So we're building a minor third onto that D. And then we go to C, and of course that's going to be a major third, and then we go to D, and that's going to be a minor third again. So starting right out, we've got this sequence, this thing. Now, we can call that a lot of, by a lot of names. It's a boogie thing, it's a blues thing, it's a whatever. But I like to call it 712. 712. That's the diatonic name. Now, of course, if we're playing blues in G, well, 7, how is B 7? Well, it's not 7 of G, but it's the 7 of the, the sort of the uh, mother key, which is the key of C major or the natural tone key and um, that we're going to use that terminology that comes from the the mother key to describe the notes of this this structure so we've got seven one two and of course if we go seven that's minor one is major two is minor three is going to be minor and four is going to be major seven one two three four three two so we're extending the five note sequence into a series of thirds and it's starting to sound like something but let's make it a little more interesting and invert each of those thirds and when we do that we take the the B instead of going up to D we're gonna go lower and now we have an inverted third. And this is another case where we could describe that as a D major sixth, but we're going to still think of it as a B minor inverted third because we want to use this as our root note structure. So if the root remains B, C, D, E, F, E, D, C, B, the third will remain D, even if it's lower in pitch. So we've got B minor, C major, D minor, E major, uh, E minor rather, F major, E minor, D minor, C major. Which is... That idea... That idea comes from the diminished fifth of the inverted tritone. It isn't just arbitrary. It comes from somewhere. The tritone, the tritone is the matrix from where all of these ideas originate and are built upon. The tritone is at the center of this musical structure. It's not something that you add on later. So the more you think of it as the heart of this music, um, the clearer things will be as you, as you continue. And we're going to continue with this in a future video. And if you enjoyed this, please say so below and uh, let me know what you think or anything thoughts or questions you have about any of it, and I will see you another time. Thank you.